Hi, uh, welcome to Solar Life. I'm Drew and I'm starting out a vlog to discuss what it's like to live off the grid. So behind me you can see our solar house and uh, we've been off grid since last November and I just wanted to share that experience with everyone so that if there was anyone wondering what it was like, uh, you'd have a sense of what it was like. So today in this episode, I'm going to discuss the reasons why we went solar and uh, why we use that as our renewable energy source. There's a lot of different reasons why people will want to use renewable energy sources for their home and I boiled those down to a bunch of different categories. The first one's financial, and then there's sustainability, independence, uh, ethical reasons, and environmental reasons. Uh, essentially, the first that most people consider is financial reasons. So they want to go uh, use renewable energy so that they can save money. If you're not using renewable energy, you're paying for your power, and you will continue to pay for your power until you start uh, investing in renewable energy. One of the things to consider is that with renewable energy, it's uh, from an investment standpoint, it's actually a really good investment. One of the reasons uh, that it's such a good investment is that it will actually pay you back for the uh, money that you put into it. It's not an instant return on your investment, but it is a guaranteed return on your investment. And as soon as you hook up the solar panels, you're going to instantly reduce the amount of power uh, that, you're, that you're using because you're gonna be generating your own power, which means you're gonna save money instantly. So that makes a lot of sense for people. With solar voltaic panels, they are one of the few things that are going to pay you back uh, over such a long period of time. They have a production life of over 25 years, and if you compare that to uh, a brand new gas car, which is going to depreciate, it's going to consume gasoline for its entire life, and uh, you know, essentially it's always gonna cost money. With a solar uh, system like ours, it's able to provide clean energy for your house for decades and for about the same price as a brand new car. So it's a really worthy investment from that uh, way of looking at it. One of the other reasons why people want to go with solar energy is that it is a sustainable resource. The sun shines a lot. We get a lot of solar days uh, in Canada and in New Brunswick, and it's essentially we get enough solar days that you can run a solar uh, system. The more power that you produce with renewable energy, the less power they have to produce to feed everyone else on the grid. So there, it's a pretty win-win situation. If you put renewable energy on uh, your property, you're going to reduce the amount of load on the grid, and that's going to, in the grand scheme of things, save uh, carbon emissions. One of the main reasons why we decided to go with solar energy is that we wanted power independence. And so with that, we also wanted to make our house more sustainable, but uh, we really, we just wanted to be able to produce our own power, have power whenever we needed it, and uh, ensure that there wasn't going to be uh, an interruption. Here, where I live out in the country, we used to lose power a lot. Uh, upwards of 10 to more times a year, we would be without power for several hours, in some cases several days. Uh, in the longest case during a hurricane, we lost power for over a week and a half. And that for us was probably the last straw when we decided, look, we gotta do something about this. Um, and then we made the, the push to go off-grid. Uh, one of the things that we've been doing to make our off-grid lifestyle even more sustainable is that we've been renovating our house so that it uh, c you know, doesn't consume as much energy, it's more efficient. Uh, we've been upgrading the, you know, the windows, the insulation, uh, various kinds of things to reduce the amount of energy that we have to put into the house. Essentially, we installed a five kilowatt system on the house with a battery storage system for the nights and the long cold uh, days where there's no sun. And other than that, we heat with wood and uh, we also heat with some solar air heaters that I've installed on the house. We chose to go off grid even though we used to be hooked up to the grid, uh, essentially because 
Well, we had lots of different reasons, and I'm going to get into those. But for us, it was about making sure that we had power all the time, especially during a grid down situation. Another factor that led us to wanting to go off grid as opposed to just putting solar panels on the house and creating a, a net metering situation is that um, essentially you can't sell power in New Brunswick. It's illegal. So the only way that you're going to benefit from uh, a net metering situation is that uh, you put enough panels on your house and uh, that balances your power bill and essentially renders your power bill down to next to nothing. Except that every month there's service fees and you pay HST for the power that you use. So there's still a small cost for accessing the grid and using the grid and uh, you know what power that you uh, bring in, you, you pay tax on as well. So you're not going to get a check if you produce too much power with your solar system. Essentially what you do is you stockpile credits for the entire year and then depending on the amount of credits that you have, if you have more credits than you need, uh, great. If you have less credits than you need, then you'll have uh, a power bill to pay essentially. But when you produce more credits, uh, at the end of the year, they just null the credits and you start accumulating again. And it's an annual cycle. There's no carryover. And so for us, uh, that didn't seem to make sense for us. And if you're in a net metering situation, you've got solar panels on your house, but when the grid goes down, so does your power. So you might have solar panels on your house, but because the grid's not there to supply your house with power, your house is out of power. So for us, we wanted to be off grid so that we had power all the time. And during a grid down situation, uh, our house is actually uh, a place where our friends and family can come, take showers, cook, eat, hang out, charge things, um, and essentially, uh, you know, have life the way we're used to. One of the more ironic things about uh, this whole situation is that we decided to go off grid because of all these grid down situations. And as we were hooking up the solar panels and getting the batteries online and you know all the equipment in place, we lost power again in the middle of November. It was almost uh, two days with no power. And we had all this equipment here, but it wasn't actually hooked up. So I called my solar technician. I said, is there any way that we can do this? And he came out and uh, hooked a few things up and shut off our connection to the grid and turned on our battery system and we had power. It was glorious. One of the primary factors for doing this as well for us had to do with the fact that we care about the environment and we want to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. So we had access to the credit to be able to do this so we thought it would make sense that we do this so that we could be early adopters and share our experiences with our friends and our family and our local community so that if other people wanted to try this uh, they would have some kind of understanding as to what it's like. So based on the various energy audits that I've had done on the house uh, before and after going off grid and uh, with all these renovations mixed in, we've been able to reduce our carbon footprint by over half, uh, mainly because now we're, we're producing all of our own power um, but we still do have some emissions because we burn wood to heat the house and we also use propane for our cooking, our hot water, and as the uh, fuel for the backup generator for when the batteries need to be recharged. However, uh, there's still room for us to improve. One of the ways that I want to further reduce the amount of wood that we burn and the amount of propane that we use is by adding some solar thermal panels. These are panels that heat up hot water essentially or glycol and uh, we're going to use those to preheat our water so that we don't have to use as much propane in our on-demand heater uh, and then we'll also be able to use the additional heat uh, to use to put into a, a, a thermal system for radiant in-floor heating and so I'm pretty hopeful that that's going to help reduce the amount of wood that we burn every year. So we can maybe get down to a half quart of wood. Um, so we're mostly only burning wood on days when it's uh, 
cloudy and it's not sunny. So on sunny days, I'm hoping that eventually the solar thermal will be able to uh, heat most of the house. All right, so let's get back to the financial side of it because that's where most people really care about how do I figure this out. So a lot of times I hear people say, I would love to live off grid, no more power bills, a simple life, back to basics kind of thing. So if you're thinking about going off grid to save money, think again. Unfortunately, going off grid is even more expensive than putting solar panels on your house because you have to buy batteries, you have to buy an inverter, uh, there's more complicated systems involved. And so we spent over $40,000 to install all the different systems that we needed to be able to go off grid. Our system's actually quite small, it's only five kilowatts, and that isn't really enough even to run a normal size household. We brought our power bills from 500 to 800 kilowatts down to 300 kilowatts before we decided to, to be actually be able to go off grid. Now every month I only produce about 200 maybe 150 kilowatts to 200 kilowatts a month and that's all the power that we use so that's a lot less than a normal household but one of the things about going off grid and, and the reason why it's so expensive is that essentially uh, you're buying all these systems up front so that you have the ability to produce power over a long period of time like I said up to 25 years in some cases so uh, it's kind of like you're buying all of your power at once up front or at least the potential to produce your power Okay, so what did it actually cost? I'm sure you're wondering what did everything cost? So uh, essentially we had to put in a propane system and that was pretty expensive. After we got that done, then we had to uh, install the solar system and the generator and the install for the generator. And that was, the generator was uh, $4,000 and the install was $3,000. And then on top of all that was the solar uh, voltaic system, the batteries and all the other components uh, came up to around $27,000. So all told, we spent roughly $40,000. And if you take that and you, and you say, okay, well, what's the return on your investment? If I took the power bills that I had for the last year and divided that into what I paid for this solar power system, it would take me roughly 24 years to pay it all off. So that's a long time and uh, a pretty long uh, return on your investment, but that's not the end. Most people can get a much quicker return on their investment if they choose to go with solar power, but decide to just uh, put solar panels on their house and work with a net metering uh, situation. So. Going off grid is more expensive because you got to buy all that battery storage, but if you don't buy the battery storage, then it's much, much cheaper. So here's how you go solar without having to remortgage your house. Essentially, uh, you need to start by finding out if your house has enough sun, where the sun hits it, where can you put the panels, uh, you're going to have to put them on the roof, uh, can you put them on a ground mount, uh, there's a lot of different things to consider but if you have solar frontage and you get good solar then it's, uh, it's actually a pretty straightforward thing. So most people tend to put solar panels up on their roof. We tend uh, to get so much snow here in the winter time that I didn't want to have to clean the solar panels off every time it snowed, so I put them on the walls. That's a little unconventional, but because of the low angle of the winter sun, it allows for fairly good uh, penetration into the solar panels and we get really good charging even in December. Um, what I'm worried about though is in the summer are we going to get equally as good charging. The other factor that we uh, used in deciding to put them on the walls is one, we never have to clean them off or wash them. And uh, the snow actually acts as a mirror and adds, you know, anywhere between 15 to 30 percent uh, reflectance up back into the solar panels. So that made up for some of the loss by putting them on the walls. Once you've committed to putting some solar panels on your house, then you need to get a net meter installed. And that measures the amount of power that you push out and the amount of power that you pull back in and it keeps track of both of those and then every month uh, you may or may not get a power bill. So once you get your net meter installed then you can start putting solar panels on your house. If you just go and hook up solar panels and you don't get the meter changed you'll actually pay for all the power that you produce with your solar panels because the meter only spins one way. So it's really important to do this step. Um, 
Plus, uh, it's important to have all the safety features installed so that if uh, someone from the power company comes to work on your house, they're not going to get electrocuted because there's uh, energy being fed into a system that they think is shut off. So once you get the smart meter installed on your house, then you can start adding solar panels. You don't have to do it all at once. You can uh, use a microinverter system and add a few panels at a time as you can afford it, or you can put them all up at once if you want. But essentially it makes it kind of a modular plug and play system and you can just add panels until you quite literally run out of room. Most normal houses will require a system that needs about 10 to 20 kilowatts of uh, solar array in order to offset the amount of power that the house uses over the whole year. So with that kind of an array, but with much less uh, components in the system, generally your return on your investment for something of that size is, is about 10 years. So that's about half of the life expectancy of those solar panels. And so you're going to get another 15 years of production out of panels that have already paid for themselves and have been providing all the power that you need uh, for decades. So going solar is a really great idea. It's something that I wish more people would do, even if it was just a little bit of the way, because it will reduce your power bills, it'll also take some of the load off the grid uh, during the sunny days, and that's gonna help the power company. And it's, you know, eventually it should make a difference. If every household in the whole province or, or the whole world had solar panels on it, maybe we wouldn't have to burn as much fossil fuels in order to keep all our houses warm. So, one of the things I just read a little bit uh, ago is that Germany has decided to shut down 84 coal plants, all of its coal plants in the whole country, and focus mainly on renewable energy. So that's a pretty great uh, incentive to put solar on your house, is that your small contribution can actually make it so that the rest of uh, the big systems can get shut down and we can move on to producing less emissions and maybe get a hold of this rapid climate change that we're all feeling every day. So sorry to end on a heavy note, but I think going solar is with a, you know, worth a lot of consideration and it's a good investment. It's easy to do. You don't even actually have to do anything. Someone's going to come and install it all for you. It's not a do-it-yourself system. It, you have to pay an electrician. It has to have building codes. It has to meet uh, various, uh, you know, electrical codes. So it's it's kind of a no-brainer. You simply, uh, you know, go to the bank and ask for the money, or if you're lucky, you can save it up and do it a little bit at a time out of pocket. It's a great thing. We've been off grid for, like I said, almost six months now. I haven't had a power bill. I haven't worried about the power. It's it just works. I do pray for sunny days, but essentially uh, this is a wonderful thing.